Now that we've created our custom use checkout hook and we're making a request from our front end with all of our cart details to our API endpoint, checkout sessions, now we want to handle that request and actually reach out to Stripe and grab our session ID to send back to the client. So let's navigate to our routes file. Remember that we created this create checkout session handler, this controller. We want to go ahead and make this async. This is going to be an async function once again. And of course, make sure to include request and response in your parameters. Like our function above, we, we want to add a try catch to handle any errors that might come about when performing this request to Stripe. And the first step in making this request is getting what was sent to us from the client. The payload here was all of the cart details and using a special piece of middleware shown here with express.json, this middleware or function that runs before each of our endpoints, each of our controllers, this allows us to parse the request body that comes in as JSON data. So that means from request.body we can get those cart items and directly put it in a variable called cart items. Now I mentioned earlier that we were going to be using this use shopping cart package on the server as well and we need this for something very important which is to validate these items against our inventory, against our products, to make sure they're actually valid products. So we need to bring in the function validate cart items from use shopping cart slash source slash server util. So once we have that function, we're going to use it and first pass in our products. This is really our inventory and our cart items that will be validated against them. This is our source of truth to make sure people don't provide false items, false prices for them, etc. And we're going to put this in a variable called line items. Then we're going to need to create a object called params for all the parameters that are going to be required for this request. We'll need first of all to include the property submit type of pay as well as an array of payment method types and this is just going to include cards so people can charge their card. There are other options with Stripe such as Google Pay and Apple Pay. Billing address collection should be set to auto. Again, these are all values that can be looked up in the Stripe documentation. Shipping address collection is an object and in it we can set some things like allowed countries. We can provide that as an array. For example, if you want an allowed country for people to purchase products from is the US or China. I believe this is optional so you do not have to require this. You do not have to include this in params. And then we include all of our line items, all the items that are going to be included in this purchase. Then a couple of values for the URL. First of all the success URL and this is going to require specifying the origin of where this request is coming from. This is going to allow us to redirect to the appropriate place. So if we're in production, that is if a special environment variable called node env is set to the string production, if we're in production we want to set that to request.headers.origin. In other words, we can get the origin of the request in production, the domain that the request came from. But if we're in development, we want to include this as simply localhost 3000. We are proxying the request, but we still need to include that. We want it to be redirected back to our React application, so we're not trying to redirect on our backend, on our backend port. So let's insert the origin as the first part of the success URL. 
origin slash result, that's the page that we're going to redirect to. And then as a query string, we're going to include the value session ID set to within curly braces checkout session ID. So our session ID is going to be included as part of this query string. We'll see why this will be important in a little bit. And we're going to include the cancel URL. And for that, we'll just include the origin. Finally, we need to specify that our mode is payment. Now, after all of that, we can use the Stripe package, which we'll need to bring in. We'll require it. And additionally, we're going to need to pass as a second argument to it process.env.stripe API secret, the secret key that we put in our env file. That allows us to await the result of this promise. And we're going to use stripe.checkout.sessions.create and pass in those params. And we're going to get back a checkout session which we're going to send back to the client the status of 200 and include all of that data on the JSON method. Now, if there is an error, we're going to respond with a status of 500. And similar, similarly to how we did before, we'll include a status code of 500 as a property, as well as a message set to error.message. So with all of that added, and making sure we can save everything. We don't have any errors. Let's try navigating back to our React client. And with our cart, we'll select Go to Checkout and see what happens. If we did everything successfully, we should have created for us a special page on checkout.stripe.com. You can see up at the top our business account associated with our store. We can see a summary of our purchase, all the items in our cart and the total. You can see the description associated with the product as well as the quantity, the price for each of those products. And we are able to provide all of our information so we can actually check out. So to be able to check out with Stripe using test keys, we can essentially provide whatever information that we like. In this case, I'm going to provide just a test email and information. And the for the card information, we can just include it as 4-2 repeating, and the same for the month and year, and for the CVC. And once we're all done with that, we can hit Pay. We see that it went through successfully, and we're sent back to our result page, where we're given the session ID that was sent back from our API within our URL. And in the next step, we'll see how to use this session ID to show users a clean result page, which will give them information about their total, as well as the email that they used to check out.